so here's some of the um, tweets that we actually made. So Zara K was arrested on, I believe, 28th of December, Are and she was held. Yeah, and, and she was held in custody for 32 hours. Obviously, nobody had any contact with her. So this is what Halima said after she, she um, after she came out um, on 29th of December. Please know that Zara K is safe, close friends no more. But unfortunately, we can we cannot release any more information on this due to sensitivity of the issue. Uh, have a look at what Mimsy said. Mimsy said, please know that Zara K is safe. We cannot release in, any more information on this due to sensitivity of the issue. But we will update you when we are able to. And this is what I said on 30th of December, which probably was 29th of December, because obviously this is Australia. Who is behind Zara K's arrest? Allegedly, it's the Koja Shia community. Again, I'm saying allegedly, because you know there's telltale signs. A young Australian human rights activist has been jailed on highly politically motivated charges. And I um, tagged Australian Foreign Minister and you know Justice for Zara K and all these kind of uh, hashtags. Um, now, uh, have a look what Mariam Namazi said. Mariam Namazi also said on 30th of December, Tanzanian government must drop all the politically motivated charges against Zara K immediately and unconditionally. Justice for Zara K, release Zara, free Zara K, whatever. Um, I just and, wanted to notice that none of these, none of these tweets, none of these tweets said that Zara K is being charged because she's an ex-Muslim, okay? It's all politically motivated as a safe bet because they also charged her for saying something against the... Uh, the president, the Initially, president right? that, it, doesn't, it, it does not appear. Mm. They didn't follow with that. After. It, it does not appear that they are pursuing that line of charges mm. any longer. Okay. So the people, if, by the way, like Mariam Namazi, uh, Jimmy Harris, Halima, like if actually, if you look at the council of ex-Muslims of great Britain statement out there. Okay. Um, and every single update, they t this is why me and Susanna were very, very careful about not saying anything because they were investigating the situation on the ground. They wanted to make sure that we don't say something that could get her into more trouble. And we were very careful not to go beyond what we're told is okay to say. All right. And if you, if you are a fucking moron who went and made a video and said like, oh, Zara K is arrested for being ex-Muslim or being blasphemous, and now you like realize that that's a, that's the wrong thing to say. Well, you didn't you didn't look at what the experts and the people that knew what was happening telling you that you should be able to say. So don't go and blame other people for you making a video that that was you should you had no justification putting out there. We were careful. We were looking at the same as we were in touch with le people who are being legally known what what happening and what even the things that were true that could have put Zara in more danger. We were careful not to say, and we were transparent about that the fact that there are more information out there that we can't share you. So if you all of a sudden get a leaked message and tell people why was this, why wasn't this told? We told you that there's more the, information that we can't mate, tell you. But go I mean, on, on the very point, I've, I've actually got the examples that you were just talking about that uh, how people made up their own mind and just went with it. So there, there were a couple of journalists that we actually spoke with. Um, and now before I go f finish this off uh, with, with that, um, on, the, on the very same day, I actually also said charges against Zara included using a SIM card that is not registered in a name, making tweets critical of the president. Um, and obviously, I think there was a Jimmy's um, uh, uh, on 31st of December as well, the government tends to must drop all the politically motivated. So, so nobody actually says uh, said that okay, this is blasphemy. But, but on that note that you just said, that how um, people went out, out their own way and they went with okay, she's been arrested because of a blasphemy or whatever. So have a look at even at the journalists, what the media, the people we were in touch with. So some someone spoke with um, uh, someone spoke with uh, from the team spoke with. Uh, ABC, which is Australia's BBC. So look, they also said campaign for ex-Muslim woman arrested in Tanzania. Nowhere in this article anywhere. And does anyone say that? Can you share the screen? Yeah. So no, nowhere in this article, uh, in this piece, anyone ever say that why she was arrested. Uh, she was arrested because of ex-Muslim. They quoted her tweet. That was that. And that, that is obviously they're just quoting it. Um, uh, the other parts also, they just said, you know, she's been accused of um, uh, of being critical towards the president. Um, the, using a SIM card not, that's not under her name uh, and 
all, all, all these things. So, but the only, and I've also got the um, screenshot of uh, the Australian newspaper, Australian, that also has said the same thing. Nowhere any of these P uh, newspaper news outlets that actually spoke with us anywhere said that she's been charged with blasphemy. But there's only one newspaper. Guess what? That actually said it, and no, none of us were actually speaking with that newspaper. And mm. that's obviously, guess who that is? Can the you share Daily the Mail. Now? That is the Daily Mail. That's correct. And nobody spoke with Daily Mail. And so Daily Mail ran with it themselves, just like how some of these people ran with it themselves. Oh, she's been charged with blasphemy. Now, no, none of us ever said that she's been charged with blasphemy. None of us ever told anyone to go and say, oh, she's been charged with blasphemy and, you know, uh, cry victim and try to gain sympathy or whatever. So, uh, that, so obviously some of these people, and now we can get into what actually happened. So there was a group and Wait, someone... I want to highlight some things okay. really quickly. So, okay, go for it. Because when we're talking about where is this accusation of blasphemy coming from or presumption of being charged with blasphemy or being persecuted for being for blasphemy and how did this ball first get rolling? Let's be specific. Okay, let me zoom in. On the 28th of December, Zara said, okay, going into the police station because someone reported me in for blasphemy. Good luck. Okay. This was the first, well, not the first. This is where a lot of this ideas about the blasphemy charge are coming from. Now, I have a lot of opinions about this tweet. I have a lot of differing opinions about this tweet. Okay. There are multiple ways that you can look at this. There are multiple tactics or reasons why someone may tweet something like this, okay? Now, personally, this is personal. I don't think it is smart to tweet about your legal issues, okay? There are multiple reasons <laughs> why it's not smart to tweet about your legal problems, okay? Well, some of the best advice I ever heard was to write everything like a judge is going to see it, okay? Another reason, and this is just me being transparent because I have my own criticisms of this issue and I want to talk about that, right. um, is that this was released and then people did not hear from Zara for roughly 32 hours, okay? So during that time, people were scrambling to figure out what was going on. People were tweeting, hashtag, where is Zara K? Because we didn't know where Zara was, okay? Now, it is, like I said before, there are many reasons why someone might tweet something like this. One of those reasons may have been exactly for people to know, hey, I'm going to the police station, and if you don't hear from me, it's because I'm at the police station. Like, uh, like if you don't hear from me, just letting the public know, okay? That is one reason why you might tweet about this, where I might think that it's ill-advised to tweet about a legal situation, right? Okay, so that may be one reason or intention or motivation. I am have been frustrated by this tweet because it has made this um, misunderstanding about the exact charge of blasphemy quite confusing. It muddied the waters. And while we were uncertain of Zara's situation. And as people were like, okay, we need to actually not blow up on social media right now because we need to figure out what's going on and we need to figure out if we can resolve this locally so this doesn't exacerbate the situation. The cat was already out of the bag here, you know, in terms of our ability to work locally and not stir up attention where maybe that wouldn't be strategic. Okay. But Armin, what do you have to say? I just want to say the standard that I have for the activists on the ground be, having to deal with being arrested at the time is very much lower for when 
um, activists in a safe place with legal mm -hmm. advice are sitting there and deciding what's the best thing to say, okay? Mm -hmm. If you're being arrested, you don't know you have access to your phone, you don't know what you're gonna say, you go, you wanna make sure the world knows what's going on to you. This, is, this tweet is not recommended, but again, I say that from a position of safety and yes. calm. Yes. So I know, I, I know this is not a good tweet, but again, it's easy for me to make that decision <laughs> right now um i you know i'm I, 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 I hope i just hope guys if i'm being if if something if something like this is ever ever happening to me i'm and going the, to war the whole yeah just let me finish this Sorry. if i put a tweet out there okay and i'm just like telling you guys something is happening to me okay and whatever that tweet is if it's not, if it's going to make my situation more difficult, if it's going to make it more difficult to defend me, if it's something that I realize later that maybe I cannot prove, even maybe it's true, maybe it's even true, but there's no way for me to prove it. Like maybe I should say, we should have said it probably for blasphemy, likely for blasphemy. But I hope you motherfuckers don't use that initial tweet that is not a perfectly legal letter that you guys are like now looking at and judging you don't use that as a fucking excuse to not come and defend me because it wasn't a fucking perfect tweet okay look at every other statement that has came out out of the ex-muslim community after that and look at even zara herself being to being told by people a lot more experienced than her when it comes to what to deal with what to say now how to deal with it and her following their advice okay even if that if she doesn't even if zara for example makes all the fucking mistakes you could possibly make after you're arrested and saying the wrong things you should still fucking defend her she's been she's like in trouble you shouldn't use that against somebody is being someone's human rights is being violated if they even make dumb mistakes even after they've been given good advice that doesn't mean that her rights shouldn't be defended anyways exactly Harris. and i like i was saying i'm speaking from a position of safety this although i have criticisms of it and i've been transparent with you guys this does not negate the legitimate aspects of her defense and I, this uh, is not going to inhibit me from her be defending her i'm not here to defend her every action i'm not here to defend everything she's done in her previous years of activism i'm not here to defend all the any other mistakes she's made or in personal relationships that people have now brought to light i'm not here to defend that okay we're talking about a legal situation that is very specific i am um, i i obviously I, I i'm more in agreement with uh, i mean and that's exactly what i was going to say that it's easier for us to say from the position of safety and when when we are under a lot of pressure we don't know zara didn't have a lot of time to think about it at that point and again who is Zara? what is Zara known for is she known for having her ties with the global criminal underworld criminal network no so is there some criminal after her some colombian gang lord after her no so is she known for criticizing the evil dictators around the world no is who who is after her some uh, putin's people or uh, xi jinping's people no what is Zara known for Zara is known for her criticism of islam so anything that happens if i get murdered perfect murder you know nobody finds anything you know i would assume that you guys would say yes yeah, highly likely that some islamist or some jihadi got a hold of harris sultan so you know that that and again that and, and 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 look imagine i'm being stabbed and i'm calling hey i'm being attacked by a jihadi even though i haven't actually fully confirmed that it is actually a jihadi but that would be a more rational and reasonable explanation at that point and again there's um there i i don't even uh, yeah obviously you can say legally it's not in a perfect um uh, it might not be a perfect uh, tweet but it's, I, I, don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with that either because that can easily be explained the, the, i don't think any judge any sane judge would actually hold a what so you actually speaking out loud thinking that who could be or who, who could be after you and that somehow is a crime it's obviously not a crime and it can't even be held against illegally by any stretch of imagination either so again it's people who jump the gun those people are responsible themselves they should have been in touch with uh, so, some of the core people so someone should have spoken with Jimmy. Someone should have tried to reach out to um, to Mimsy or, uh, or or Mariam um, and, and say, "Hey, this is what I have received." Um, so and then obviously now we're going to go into the screenshot saga. But um, they should have asked then instead of just 
tweeting publicly and making videos and like, hey, wiping off your hands. And it's like, oh, I've got nothing to do. I have a high, I have a lot of high integrity. Stop this bullshit. No one's buying that. Really quickly, there is another aspect to her tweet saying about about the blasphemy. Okay. <laughs> this is something that I assume because when I saw that tweet, I was like, oh, it's probably because of this post where well, like can I zoom in more? Okay, well, the image isn't zooming in more, but if you see here, she posted love is love on the 18th, okay, very recently to when she was arrested, um, which is uh, two gay men, um, one of them whom had to escape from Egypt because he's an open atheist, um, kissing in front of the Kaaba, which has a rainbow transcending over it and then a rainbow flag on the Kaaba. And then she had, following that, posted all of the legal sh complaints she got from Twitter because of, and from the uh, government of Pakistan itself regarding, here it is, this tweet, okay? So if you had recently tweeted something like this, you might think, oh, people are asking me to come into the police station because of activity on my social media. Or they're coming they're coming to, to ask me into the police station maybe it has something to do with this it might be likely it might be probable that it has something to do with this which is blasphemous and this is something on so update number four from the council of ex-muslims of britain um highlighting a lot more of the um details of this so the, the, here they are addressing the specific concern regarding her tweet and they highlight since she had recently posted the following blasphemous tweets and because the threats around the issue of blasphemy is customary for ex-muslims it is reasonable that she believed that she was being asked to report to the station for that purpose so this is what we're talking about given the information that she had available to her at the time mm. this is what she believed Mm -hmm. And again, this is even even if you f guys think that these uh, these information makes it likely. Look, we still say it's likely, it's possible. We never said it's certain. Okay, I do want to. Uh, is this uh, this? By the way, this is Abdullah Samir, right? Uh, yeah. Guys, make sure your friend uh, Abdullah Samir has a new YouTube channel, Friendly Ex Muslims. Please go, ch please go check it out. Um, and he's saying, can you guys talk about ex Muslims losing their shit over this? Oh, I don't trust anyone in the ex-Muslim community anymore. You're a bunch of fakes. I used to look up to you. Oh, we're getting first there. Of all, first of all, if you treated the entire ex-Muslim community as a monolith and you thought that you could trust everybody in the ex-Muslim community you're because a moron. they're ex-Muslim, you're, you're a fucking moron. That's your, more on you than on the ex-Muslim community, all right? Um, obviously, we have morons in every community, including the ex-Muslim community, and we're going to be highlighting some of them here today. So, yeah, let's get into it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, really quickly. Also, people are saying ex-Muslim community very broadly, okay? Or this is breaking up the ex-Muslim community. It's fragmented, blah, blah, blah. Guys, there is no ex-Muslim Ummah, and that's a good thing. If this community is fragmented, that means that it's growing and it's large enough to be fragmented. When people are talking about the ex-Muslim community, what they're actually referring to is a handful, a very small number of ex-Muslim activists, okay? There are millions of people in countries like Iran, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, Bangladesh, millions of people who are ex-Muslims. So when you're talking about the ex-Muslim community, you actually mean these very specific maximum like 25 activists, okay? So that's who you're talking about. You're not talking about these millions of people, okay, across the entire world. So be clear, okay? You, I can't trust the ex-Muslim community. This community doesn't exist. It does, okay? You're talking about specific individuals. And also subscribe to our newsletter because if we get removed from all these uh, platforms at least we could reach out to you and guys by the way if you subscribe to our newsletter you get a free copy uh why there's not where's your copy susanna get it get it get it they're doing promotion you get a free it's not even promotion it's free okay so if you subscribe to our newsletter link in the description you get a free copy of why there's no god ah Come on, like I'm handing it out for free. Okay, it's a bestseller on Amazon and you get it for free. So subscribe to our newsletter and you get a free copy of Why There's No God sent to you. Link in the description.